Welcome everybody to part three of our Google Sites eBinder series. This episode is on template types. So we've already given you the overview of what an eBinder contains. And then in part two, we told you how to create that template folder to allow students to make copies without actually um, editing or messing up your original template. But now we want to talk about once you've created that folder, what template types can you actually create? Well, the sky's the limit on the types of templates you can make, but here are a few examples that I want to showcase for you. One is a single subject um, digital subject notebook or a, or digital e-binder. And we recommend that when you create a single subject binder for your particular class, you break up the binder um, by units or um, what, whatever way you segment the class up per semester. Um, I'm going to give you an example of science because in science, when I taught that class, we taught in units. Um, so we broke up the task here in units. And if you click here on unit one, this basically gives you the overarching anchor phenomena or the overall question, all the activities of the unit um, are going to go back to and answer. And so you have your anchor phenomenon or your 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 overarching question. Um, you have an ongoing learning blog, which is um, every time you learn something new from a task or activity or lab, you come back and write the most important things that you've learned that will help you answer the overall arching question. Um, here I have a summary table. It's just a visual of, of the activities of what you observed and what you've learned. Just a visual concept of that learning log at the top. You don't have to use it. I just like visuals. And then finally, I always recommend that on this page, you put a blank placeholder of a, a Google slide that you have for that unit. And it's, it's because um, we really want you to be able to update your templates when, once the students have them, um, but you can't really update the templates once they do. We'll get more into this on how we use this on how to update templates once students have made a copy. But that's what we add in to the units. And then under the units, um, we in this tree structure, we have our tasks. These tasks can be activities. These tasks um, can be labs. These tasks can be projects. So whatever main thing that you're doing with your students that will help you answer the unit overarching question. And in these tasks, you have an essential question that you're trying to answer. So the task has something they're trying to answer for that particular task, and that task has an answer that will go into the overarching unit. Um, and so in these task pages, we have focus notes, places to do that, a place to answer the essential question, um, a place for them to add learning artifacts, which are going to be activities uh, and projects students have made to help them understand, and then a learning log page. What did they learn from this particular task that helped them answer the essential question? And the main overarching thing they learned should then be placed back on the unit task page. Um, I also have a place for a class blog. Um, usually I give my students a question of the day, something to really think about. And I push that out via Google Classroom. So if you see here underneath my week, um, I have a question. It says, answer the following question. It says, how has technology changed your life? Um, they would answer the question in Google Classroom. So everybody gets that answer, but then they would copy and paste that answer right back into their blog. That's just an option. I just like my students to be able to have a place for them to do some free writing. Um, so that's kind of how I utilize that. So that's if you're using an overarching um, uh, e-binder for your one particular class. If you're doing it for a whole school, now this is if you have buy-in from everybody or a student who just really wants to do everything for their entire school, instead of units breaking up the uh, the e-binder, we have subjects breaking up the e-binder. And instead of right beneath the subject having tasks, we have our units and then right beneath the units, then we have our tasks. So it just adds one more tier to that tree structure, but it'll help us create this entire school e-binder. But everything else is pretty much the same with the task pages and all of that. And finally, um, I love being able to do e-binders for all different subjects. So when I had an elective subject, 
we started having, we, we basically just had projects. And so in this, I, I write down all the different projects that we're going to be doing for our students. And this is part of their eBinder. I also include a calendar of everything that's going to be due. And this calendar actually connects to my Google Classroom. So anytime I, I put in a project in Google Classroom, it will automatically appear here on this calendar. We have a video of how exactly how to connect your Google Classroom to your Google Calendar uh, to your Google site um, in our um, in our YouTube channel if you'd like to see that. And finally, we have a place for that blog. And instead of going by units, we just have projects. So just a name of all the different projects. So this eBinder here is a little bit simpler um, for those students who um, are using utilizing this just for an elective class. This is also great for PE because students can then have all the different sports they are studying um, and they can embed YouTube videos and everything that they would want to do right there. So that is our quick little video on the different types of eBinders that we have thought of. Um, but hey, the sky is the limit when it comes to eBinders. So you can create your eBinder any way that you would like. If you would like to have these eBinders, you are more than welcome to grab them from us. Um, we have an entire... Um, an entire folder in our Google Drive called eBinder templates that you can go ahead and get in the in the notes of this video. And it has all examples of these uh, different eBinders that we have, and you can make your very own copies of these, make tweaks to them, and make them fit the best for you. Oh, and one more thing. Um, when you have your master copy, your master template for your students, I highly recommend as the year goes on, you add to it. You're gonna find things that you like, things that you don't like, and so adjust it along the year. Even though it won't make the changes to the, your current students, it'll make the eBinder even better for next year. So I highly encourage that you are constantly um, updating your eBinder. And oh, sorry, one last thing. Um, this is even easier and even better when you have a department all working on creating the best template for an eBinder. So you can absolutely add um, contributors and editors um, to this um, as in other teachers who want to add to this eBinder. So that is a great option because many hands make light work. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for taking the time to watch our eBinder series for Google Sites. Thank you and have yourself a great day.